Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Farzad Fatale Fard. Uh, I'm from Morris Berkeley National Lab. Um, I'm here with representing uh, LBL, and uh, we, we're working. This is the work I'm showing here uh, is with uh, uh, Texas Tech uh, with John Lydell over at Texas Tech and Ji Wang Yang Chen, and then my uh, colleague David D'Onofrio at uh, LBL. So here's a sort of an outline of what I'm going to be talking about, sort of a motivation of what we're doing here. Um, present. I should probably say what I'm presenting here. Presenting uh, Open SOC System Architect, which is a toolkit for open source SOC generation. Um, so we're going to go through the motivation a little bit. Uh, we're going to go through the, you know, what what kind of design accelerations we provide. Uh, the tool, the, go through the tool chain itself, and then talk a little bit about the back end of the tool. So what is our motivation? Well, we're sort of reaching sort of the end of this of uh, Moore's law, right? So uh, the expectation is that we're going to have other technologies replace uh, traditional CMOS, but a lot of these technologies are about, you know, 10 years out or so. So in order to bridge the gap between this, uh, these new technologies and try to keep the uh, performance go continuing, uh, sorry, performance scaling continuing, uh, we are going to, the, the, we got to fill this gap. And so the way we, we are going to achieve that is with specialization. So, and as some of us are very well aware, a lot of the current architectures are pretty wasteful. Um, a lot of a lot of the uh, we spend a lot of our time not on computation, but a lot of time on uh, data movement. Um, as you can see here with this little uh, the graph here on a little pie chart here, uh, we also see that uh, we have uh, the the bar graph on the bottom shows that we, this is an application running on an, uh, a certain application that was running on an FPGA um, it versus a certain uh, multi-core design. And we, we see the, the red bar shows that this over, it, um, the speed, there's quite a bit of speed up even on the FPGA itself. If we took this to ASIC, this would be even much faster. So there's, there's ways we can improve our, these, this, our architectures and designs with specialization. Um, at the same time, we're starting to see uh, a wave of open source hardware. I mean, this is we're at the Risk Five retreat. I mean, everybody is well aware of that. Um, but this is a this is a slide from the uh, GSA saying that, like, yeah, there's that we're starting to see this. We saw this trend in software with you know the start with the starting of Linux, but we're also we're starting to see that in hardware as well. And so, this is something that we should probably we shouldn't ignore. I mean, this is something that we should really consider using as well. Um, I mean, I know I'm preaching to the audience here, but uh, uh, preaching to the choir, yeah, whatever, preaching to the choir. Why should we do open source hardware? Well, uh, we can actually do more effective vendor engagement. So in our, uh, at the lab, for example, where we're doing design space exploration for potential uh, HPC uh, procurements, we can actually uh, generate real hardware with these open source components and be able to show like actual numbers to the vendors, like, hey, like this is a design that actually works for us. Uh, closed source IP doesn't really allow us to do that because you know it's closed source and we can't really vendors don't typically like it when you're diving down inside their code and saying like oh I'm going to change this little thing they don't take kindly to that. Also, being that it's open source, it also uh, it reduces the barrier to entry. It, I mean, it's kind of open source; it's free, so it reduces uh, it significantly reduces NRE and IP costs. And uh, another motivation for this work is that uh, we like we say you know those who don't remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Um, this is something we we've, we've been doing these point designs uh, quite uh, consi uh, quite consistently over the past few years. Uh, Texas Tech did the uh, Goblin Core design, which was a uh, extension to the Risk Five architecture set for data intensive computing. Um, we had a pro we have a point design that uh, we worked with in conjunction with Texas Tech uh, for a, cons uh, a customer uh, calling it Whiskey Run, which is a multi-core design with a uh, network on with a uh, mesh network with message passing, a local scratch pad, and some scatter gather extensions as well. And in both cases, we found that we were repeating a lot of a lot of the same steps to try to create this point design. So we figured, why not just simplify it? And just take care and do all this simple stuff once, and then just create a generator to do all that kind of easy work. So that's where uh, open open SOC system architect comes into play. So as so a lot of you are very well aware, uh, traditional hardware development is 
very expensive. It takes a lot of design time to you know come up with uh, these IP blocks, and it takes a lot of resources. Uh, they take about you know de development life cycles about you know a few months to a few years, and it's non -triv it's non trivial work to you know come up with all these individual IP blocks, and this is ignoring any you know mass costs or you know bring up costs and whatnot. This is just for the IP bits itself. So it's also so in current methodologies are typically you have like two separate teams where like one's the design team and one's a verification team and so they're like you know to totally disjoint and um, it's hard to get like a it's really hard to do rapid scale uh, rapid um, prototyping with that and especially if you're designing a very large SOC like a very large multi-core or you know things with different IP blocks it's very difficult to get all these to come to do any rapid prototyping so is there a way to make it a lot faster and make development, uh, make rapid prototyping uh, possible? And the answer is yes. We have open system, open SSC system architect. So this is a, a combination of multiple tools. Uh, from uh, we use the Rocket and the Zion, the Zscale cores as our main cores. Uh, we allow you to add. Any custom instructions or any extensions you'd like to add as well, get you can put it in the tool. We also have our uh, network on chip fabric called OpenSOC Fabric, which is an uh, NOC generator, which you can generate multiple topologies. We'll get into that little a few slides on that a little bit later. Um, what makes this all possible is that this is all written in Chisel. So this is from Chisel, we can then generate a synthesizable Verilog from it, and also any extensions that you add in our tool will also be added to an LLVM compiler that is also generated so that you can make use of those extensions. So let's go through the tool, plane, the tool chain a little bit more and uh, we'll go into a little bit of detail. So as I mentioned, this is based uh, entirely on Chisel. Um, it is a, a hardware DSL that is a, raises the level of abstraction for uh, hardware design. So it adds like things like object-oriented programming, um, adds like functional uh, programming, and it makes in parameterization makes it it's a lot easier to use uh, this and to make these bigger uh, and parameterized hardware designs using Chisel. And the great thing about it is that it generates a synthesizable Verilog as well. So it reduces uh, waste, uh, it reduces your design time, and uh, reduces the cost numbers because you're not sitting there like uh, analyzing like little Verilog bits. And since it's a generator, it's, you can quickly turn churn out designs very quickly. Um, as you're all very well aware, Risk Five is another piece that's a big part of it. Uh, currently, uh, as I mentioned, we're currently using the Rocket and the Z scale in our design. We have planes to add boom as well. And uh, the other key part uh, piece of IP that I mentioned is OpenSSC Fabric. Now, this is a network on chip generator that is written in Chisel. Um, there, it's completely parameterizable. The number of endpoints, what uh, the topology of the network. Uh, how many virtual channels, your queue depths, like it, every little piece that can be parameterized is parameterized. Uh, you can also, uh, the endpoints are also parameterizable. So right currently, right now, we, we just added Axie support. So you can plug in anything that is Axie. But you can also have uh, any kind of, uh, if you want to, if you have your own custom shim for doing that, that's very easy. You just implement the chisel for it and you just pass it in as a parameter. Uh, and it integrates very well. And yes, it'll integrate with I.O. devices as well. Uh, we currently actually have it working on uh, memory uh, for like standard DDR and uh, HMC as well. So yeah, this is, so this is the key component of uh, the OpenSSC system architect. So this is sort of the grand vision is that we, uh, the, this whole OpenSSC uh, tool flow, we have the OpenSSC fabric as our like stitching network. We have the compiler that I mentioned before that uh, any custom instructions you add will uh, get added to the LLVM compiler. We have the cores, and currently we have Risk Five, but there's nothing stopping you from adding any other IP core, any um, other IP mm, processor cores that you have, like say ARM or Tensilica. Uh, but you know, we're trying to keep it as open source as possible, so Risk Five is what we're doing, and so all, it all comes together in the System Architect umbrella. Um, so it's broken up into these. The tool chain itself is broken up into these small, in these smaller little pieces. We have the front end, which lets you, you know, integrate, like pick and choose all the number of options you want. There's an uh, core gen IR, the knock interconnect that I mentioned, the RISC-V cores, and the LLVM compiler. 
uh, the, when the user, when they open up the front end, they can input their design specs. You can you can open up, it'll show you like what options you want, whether you want what kind of risk five you want, what, what kind of uh, standard extensions you want, and uh, what kind of, and if you want to add any custom instructions or any custom extensions as well. Uh, the You can instantiate as many cores as you want too. Uh, this is, and it, they don't have to be homogenous. They can be completely heterogeneous or they can, you can do however, however designs of course you want. This is all then, um, it also instantiates a network, the OpenSC fabric that glues it all together. And then there's, we also have this, we developed this core gen IR, which maintains uh, design correctness and continuity. So if there's a new version of Chisel that comes out, or if there's a new version of LLVM, that's no problem. You just pick whatever version you want and it generates accordingly. I'm gonna go dive a little bit deeper into the core gen backend a little bit. Uh, core gen is uh, this, it's in this integrated IR that uh, it's the, typically it's very hard to verify and uh, build these complex SOC designs. Uh, this makes it a lot easier. It allows you to uh, it allows you to de define your uh, <clears throat> your design very easily and automatically builds. As I mentioned, it automatically builds the um, the design itself, whether with the not version of Chisel you want and with the uh, LLVM version you want. And this, as a result, this reduces your design time, time wasted, just try to like implement and verify that these all work together. Uh, to clarify what it is not, it is not an SOC layout tool. Uh, it is, doesn't generate any max and it does not handle any tool optimization. So it does not, like, it doesn't do any like synthesis or anything. It's just uh, an intermediate like uh, IP layout, just sort of like how it, everything's connected together. Uh, it's semi-strict. It uh, sort of st stores them in memory as a C++ object. Uh, they're stored on disk in the form of XML. Um, but essentially, yeah, like I mentioned, this is the SOC. You pick out the what kind of cores you want, whether the, they can be what kind of and what your cache hierarchy is. Uh, they they don't have to be all the same. They can be heterogeneous. Um, the cores themselves, so you can you pick out what RS5 core you want, what ISA mode your dress mode and your what base implementation. And again, any extensions, register classes, registers or instructions, like whatever you want. You def it's defined in the IR and it's generated from this. Um, this is sort of the dependency graph of the IR itself. As I mentioned, those are all the individual little pieces that come together to form your SOC. Um, and this is a sample imp implementation, uh, sample IR. So here we're defining a register class, uh, uh, a custom register class of uh, 64 bits. And then here we're defining the instruction itself where we're using this new register class and uh, defining what it does. Um, for more information, um, what's, what we got coming up next on the pipeline, we want to be able to better support Chisel 3. Uh, we also want to add with other, we want to integrate with uh, currently existing RISC-V uh, tools and environments. We want to be able to add Boom into this into our uh, system architect. Uh, we want to have SIMD instructions, and we want to have support for RV128. Um, we also add these. We also want to have uh, extend the uh, existing Chisel support at our front end, so you can actually type in some Chisel code. And we want to be, have the ability to add any Verilog or system Verilog. You can just add into the front end. We want to add that capability so that it makes it easier for people who have other IP blocks they want to add in. Um, we also want to add a standalone IR uh, extension so that you don't have to uh, use our, if you don't want to use our front end, you just want a simple like, hey, I just want a uh, RISC-V core. I don't care about like any of this fancy extension stuff. We're going to uh, add that support too so you can just like, just dump it in. It'll generate a simple core. Uh, I want to acknowledge the US for DOE and the Laboratory of Physical Science for funding this, kind of this work. Uh, for more information, visit our website, uh, opensoc.community. And uh, these are some of the groups that are involved. Like I mentioned, the LBL com Computer Architecture Group, uh, DISCO at TTU, and Technical Computing Labs. And uh, some of our source code is available currently. Uh, the OpenSSC Fabric is available on GitHub. The, um, I believe some of the core gen stuff is available at um, TTU's GitLab instance. Uh, we are currently, we just uh, announced this two weeks ago. And so we, uh, OpenSSC System Architect isn't currently available, but our plan is to 
it is for it to be open source and freely available to everyone. So with that, that's the end of my talk. Yeah, thanks. That's fabulous. Actually, I wrote a grant proposal to do this a little while ago, but now I don't have to do the work. <laughs> um, what I wanted to say, first of all, the, the name CoreGen is already used by Xilinx to generate IP cores. Right. That's an unfortunate overload. Yeah, yeah, we've um, learned it's, that. It's confusing as a FPGA guy. Uh, and, and secondly, you say system on chip, but I only see CPU cores. I don't see IPs, like devices, and generating the address space to access them. Is that also part of the tool? So currently, we don't provide, we don't have any specific IP blocks, but you're more than, uh, people are more than welcome to, we have, the, the, we, bleh, sorry. We use uh, the black, Chisel's back black box feature to add any uh, outside IP that you have, you can integrate in no problem. So what you're saying is you actually want contributions as an IP library to build this up? You don't have to actually, we, we don't ask for contributions for like specific IP blocks. If you want to be able to, if you have a set that you want to use, you're more than welcome to use it. Uh, if you would like to contribute back, that would be greatly appreciated, but it's not a requirement to use the tools. Thank you. One more over there. Yeah. Uh, Andreas Koch, TU Darmstadt in Germany. Um, similar to, to Guy's question, um, going beyond the processor cores, do you have any support for accelerators embedded in using Tilelink or similar stuff in your system? Um, no accelerator. So uh, currently, we only have the little uh, scatter gather engine that we uh, implemented. Um, we do have, we, don't, don't have an explicit roadmap for adding any accelerators, but uh, that's definitely something we want to look into in adding uh, a, a sort of a library of uh, accelerators for people to use. Okay, thanks. Hi, this is Skull Page from Open Silicon. I have the question on the uh, fabric. Mm -hmm. so do you support cache coherence in the fabric or uh, is it been taken care of outside? That it's uh, you can add cache coherence onto it. Current so it's just a fabric. There is no, it, it just hand, it's just a ma bare bones mesh. So if you want to implement a uh, a cache coherent protocol on top of it, you're more than it, it's fully capable of doing handling that. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Jack from Sci Five. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this. Do you plan to support Tilink as part of the Open SLC fabric? <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Tilelink is, I mean, it's, if it's part of the rocket core, it's currently uh, handled. Um, we're doing our, we are doing our own uh, cache coherence as well to enhance, uh, to add some features to uh, Tilelink as well. Any other questions? No? All right. Thanks a lot.